Hello, this is Riley from Make Good, and I thought today, instead of one of our more formal how-to videos, I would just tell you guys a little story from my early days as a freelancer. Got my cute mug to settle in with your cup of coffee, and I figured I'd tell this story because it's one of the more formative early freelancing experiences that I'd say I had because this is the worst client that I have ever had. So I wanted to tell you guys about this horrible person. Of course, uh, we'll not be including any names, mainly because I don't remember any names. And I will be telling you about the worst client I ever had, who I'm very proud of myself, was also one of the shortest term clients that I have ever had. So, let's see, this was when I was first starting out freelancing and I, uh, I was trying everything. I wanted to try everything and see what I really liked. And I really recommend that as a strategy when you're starting out, whatever you're doing as a freelance writer, but if you're a video editor, you know, or, or you just like media, you know, try a bunch of different things, try editing podcasts, try editing, if you, uh, like art, try graphic design or try character design or a bunch of these other different things. So try everything that's even sort of related to what you like. And then if you do it and then you don't like it, just drop it. Just don't, don't ever do that thing again. And for me, the thing that I was trying was press releases. I was trying to do uh, press releases because a lot of what I was doing at the time was blog writing, and like about sections of websites, the, the, the copy on websites and like content on website that really isn't paid very well. Um, you know, you gotta start somewhere. So I was doing a lot of that, press releases. Press releases were paid like a lot better for a lot shorter word count. I was like, well, this will be good. I'll give this a try. And I applied to one that uh, was looking for somebody who had experience writing but didn't necessarily need experience with press releases. You just needed to know what, how a press release worked, <laughs> what you needed to include, and then how to actually get it out into the world, which I did a Google search, uh, fake it till you make it, figured out like, okay, what would I need to do so I can tell the client, like, this is the steps we're gonna need to take. And then I went, um, you know, applied for the job and I got it. And the first thing that kind of set off my radar uh, was the guy wouldn't tell me anything over, this was through Upwork, he wouldn't tell me anything over Upwork, like not the name of the company. I was like, before we meet, do you want to give me any details? I like to make sure that I'm well researched before I talk to the client. And no, no, he did not. He did not want to type anything down, have anything in writing, uh, which was shall we say, suspicious, at the very least a red flag. I got on the call, and like I said, it was a guy, his name is, his, I don't remember his name. We're, we're just gonna call him the guy. And since it's only me, I'm the only other character in this story, you're gonna know who I'm talking about when I say the guy. So, um, I'm on the phone with the guy, and you know, he's the start of the conversation, um, he didn't ask me like anything about my experience, which was reassuring in a way because I didn't have any experience writing press releases in particular, but the guy asked me nothing about my experience. Uh, he just kind of started going into what he wanted. It was all kind of vague. He wanted the press release to be about how his company was acquiring a new factory which so here's one of the things i learned right away about press releases a press release you have to pay to put out the press release but you're not paying to make sure it ends up in a newspaper it has to be something that like matters to reporters so this guy had just his random company who was paying to acquire a factory and and it wasn't even like his company it was the company owned another company and that company was brokering the deal. 
to acquire the factory. And I was like, okay, so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm gonna get this contract. So I'm, I'm wheeling and dealing on the phone. And I was like, well, how about this? Um, send me over all the information you have so that I can completely understand what we're talking about. I wanna make sure that I present it accurately. Send me over anything you would like included in the press release. And then I'll turn it into something that we can then send, send to these various press release services. And I'll make sure it's something that people will actually want to print. You know, I kind of started hinting like, we need to give newspapers a reason to even talk about you. So he, he was like super excited and super on board. And I was like, okay, cool. I won this contract, press releases, here I come. I'm gonna break, I'm breaking through. Is that a song? I feel like it's like sort of like a high school musical song, but I butchered it. Anyway, I started working. I did the first press release, worked a really long time on it. Um, I was not working for very much money at this time. I expected the whole project, like drafting the little release and figuring out where to send it and sending it to people to take me a total of two hours. So I quoted him $60 because at that time I was working for about $30 an hour. So I was going to get the first 30 when I drafted the thing, and then I was going to get the second 30 once we submitted it to uh, the wires. That was the deal that we did. Like I said, I would definitely charge more now, knowing what I do know, knowing how to sell myself a little better, but also I had no experience and I had just started out as a freelancer. So that, and so that was still pretty good. I expected to get about $30 for each hour of work minus Upwork's fees or whatever. This was a pretty good deal. I started I started looking through his materials though. And the website was weird. <laughs> you know how you can look at a website and you're like, somebody just built this. <laughs> like this is this website has been built recently, it has not been tested. It is like it just felt kinda shammy and it all set up a bunch of like red flags for me. And uh I looked all over it though and I got all the information and I and I it mentioned a bunch of other corporate partners but when I looked them up the only place they were referenced was that website and like you know maybe they had like one other kind of entry in some obscure list of companies and I was like okay but I you know uh I did work for an oil company for a little bit, so I wasn't completely, like, this all had something vaguely to do with oil. So I wasn't completely, like, out of know-how in that industry. That's one of the things that got me the contract. But when I was looking at his site, I was like, I don't recognize any of these names. This is clearly, like, the parent company. I had to send him like a bunch of questions about like, so which of these companies is the one you're actually like a part of? And like, I never really got a clear answer. He was like, we can talk on the phone about it. And I was like, oh, that's not good. He doesn't want to like type it. But I got through my first draft. I got through the first draft. I had to, he sent me so much information. First of all, he sent me like 2000 words. Now, if you know anything about like online copywriting, 2000 words is a really, really long blog. Like that, it's like a long article. 2000 words is an in-depth exploration of this thing. There is no way in heck that a busy reporter was going to read 2000 words about this. There's no way. And there's no way they were going to print it. I thought maybe I cut it down a lot and it, it, it gets put in because there was all China was involved somehow. I, <laughs> and so I use it as an example of like cooperation between American companies and China. And that was my angle for the press release. I was like, this is an example of an American company who was working with a Chinese company because one of the companies listed was a Chinese gun. That was my angle for it. So I made it a lot shorter. I cut it down to 500 words, which is which was the recommendation for press releases of this kind. And because the idea is like, if a reporter really likes your story, they will reach out and ask you more questions about the release. That's kind of the thing that they do, they're a reporter. But if you send like this massive thing, well, all the blogs that I read about press releases were like, they're not gonna read it. So I cut it down. I took his massive thing that like focused on all this stuff 
about like the details of his company and like mentioned him like 16 times. And uh, I kind of shifted that to be more about the growth in the international community. Um, and so I wrote this article, I wrote this like 500 word press release and I sent it to him. And the guy messages me back and he goes, you ruined it. You ruined what I wrote. You absolutely butchered this. This is horrible writing. Uh, and he like goes on to lecture me about it and tells me that I, I, I just ruined it and he doesn't have time to edit all of it. And I said, okay. And you know, you always have to stay calm with a client. Uh, but there's a thing about being a young woman in literally any industry that people think they can lecture you. So I like to nip that shit right in the bud. Uh, so basically he went off about like, this is horrible writing. And I just told him very calmly, this is standard practice for a press release. A press release is going to be between 500 and 800 words. I think that's what I found on the internet. I can't remember now, it's a long time ago. But a press release is going to be between 500 and 800 words. It's not going to be as long as you said. And we needed to find some sort of reason for people to want to print the story. I just flat out told him. I was like, nobody's going to care. I did it as politely as possible. I was like, nobody's going to freaking care about what your business did unless there's a reason for them to care. Like, can they buy stock in you? Like, no, like he wasn't, it wasn't a public company yet. So no, like, uh, are you hiring? No, because your company looks fake and I don't think anybody actually works for you. And I don't know if that's exactly what happened. Like I said, I still don't really understand, but that's what it felt like to me. A lot of red flags. So the guy's messaging me. He's like, this was horrible writing. You did a horrible job. You took all, everything, all of the good details out of this article. And I said, what I did was take your long thing about this and change it into an article somebody might actually print. But uh, he did not agree. So, you know, the client, the client is always right in that, you know, if you want their money and to continue working for that person, you should, you know, do as asked. But this is with the caveat, you as a freelancer do not have to continue working for assholes. That is the point of freelancing. You can just stop working for assholes. It's great. It's the main perk. So, you know, he is really rude about the way that my writing was, but I, you know, uh, I said, okay, would you prefer if I went and just edited the first article down, but kept your wording exact? And he was like, no, I don't have time to rewrite it. And I'm like, that's not what I said whatsoever, but okay. And then he was like, I'm gonna go in and edit what you did. And then he went in and he added a bunch of details that he didn't include in the first draft, but he was mad that I didn't include. He was like, you should have mentioned all of these things. And I'm like, bro, I don't know your life. I don't know what you're talking about. I've never heard you mention this before. So how am I supposed to know to include this? So he went in and I like, I'm supposed to be a mind reader. This is the other thing that's annoying sometimes about, this is really the only client I've had like this who like expected me to be a mind reader. Um, but yeah, so he added all this stuff in. So I went through, I fixed all his grammar errors and his horrible sentence structure because the man could not write. And uh, I sent that back to him and he called me again. And he was like, and he calls me and he's like, it's just not good. Your writing is so bad. And this time, it wasn't my writing. It was his. I don't understand. Like, all I did was, was fix the pure grammar errors. That's all I did. I kept it how he had it, but I fixed the grammar errors. But he didn't remember what he'd written. So he called me. He's like, your writing is terrible. I don't understand. And then he, like, went in this other weird direction, and he was like, I know that if we work together, you can really flourish as a writer and you can really find your voice. And if we keep working together, 
you're really going to improve. And I was like, oh, oh no. I'd already got my first $30 for the draft. I just wanted my second $30 in a GTFO because this was a horrible man. And he was trying to neg me. <laughs> so yeah, I had a client actually try to neg me because he wanted me to, the next thing he was asking me to do was to help him start drafting legal documents. And I told him, I'm like, I'm not a lawyer. I don't know anything about the law. I'm not the right person freelancer for that job so when I told him no about that he tried to tell me I was a terrible writer in order to convince me to keep working with him so that he could teach me how to write uh I have a lot of self-confidence about my writing at least I knew I was better than this person, and I had no desire for him to teach me how to write horribly. So he was on the phone with me, and he was trying to neg me, and I told him, No, I am a good writer. I don't think that I'll be needing any instruction from you. I just need to know what you want changed about this draft before we submit it for the final $30. And he said, I want you to take some time and really think about it. Really think about the work. This was for $60. I had already spent hours writing and rewriting this. It was for $60 and he wanted me to take some time to ponder it. So I got off of that phone call and I am reeling. I'm just like, oh my God. And I'm arguing between like, the sunk cost fallacy and like do I continue trying to help this person who's trying to la he's trying to like use insecurities that I don't have to like make me keep writing for him and make me spend more and more time talking to him and f finally I was just like no this isn't worth it it's not worth the $30 I don't want to be associated with whatever is going on here so I got my first 30 for the review, for the like first draft. And then I, which he wasn't gonna use. And then I just messaged him and said, uh, hello, I'm afraid I will no longer be working with you. I uh, do not appreciate the way that you've been speaking to me. And I do not continue with clients who speak to me in such a way. Uh, you know, I just try, I try to be as professional as possible, but I just said, your communication style isn't doing it for me. And I will no longer be doing this contract. I don't expect the other $30. So much work and aggravation for just $30. And this is the type of thing. And you know, then he just like ended the contract without saying anything to me. Thank God, honestly. And I, uh, the nice thing about Upwork is you can leave reviews. You can leave reviews about clients too. It's a little biased because like, you know, if you wanna work with a client again, you're gonna leave them a good review because they can see the reviews. I did not wanna work with him again. So I left a terrible but honest review about him because he was horrible. Um, very rude, very rude man, very insulting. But, and then he left a review for me, which is to this day, the lowest review that I have on my Upwork page uh, for three stars. And in the description, he wrote no comment. <laughs> which just makes me laugh whenever I look at it. And the nice thing is that Upwork, once you've been using it for a while, they have an appeal system. You can remove bad reviews that you don't think you deserved off of your profile, but my score is already pretty high and having one person, you know, who didn't enjoy working with me makes me feel like I look more like a real person, you know, like I'm not for everybody. And that's what I figured out from this experience is, uh, you don't have to be all things to all people. You don't have to say yes to everything. Uh, the red, like the whole point of being a freelancer, there's so much attendant stress and, you know, sometimes the money's not great. When you're, especially when you're first starting out, um, it only took me a couple of years to start making like better amounts than that story. But, you know, uh, I found a lot of clients that I really love. I found another guy around that time who I'm still working with and we work on all sorts of fun projects. 
There's no reason to spend your time w working for shitty people who don't respect you. Uh, even if you're young, even if you're not charging a whole lot, uh, if people are shitty to you, just get rid of them. And that's just a good lesson. Like, life lessons! Uh, but yeah, especially for freelancing when you're starting out. Like, that really firmly, one, it told me I don't want to do press releases because they're boring. I did not enjoy writing it. There was nothing interesting about it. And there's like a lot more legal stuff around it. There's like a lot of process around it that I just didn't want to get involved with. So I'm glad I avoided that. But uh, you also don't have to deal with somebody being rude to you. If you don't like the way that they're talking to you, drop them, get a new client. Uh, I know it can be really hard to find clients sometimes but it's not worth the aggravation. It's not worth making yourself miserable for some asshole uh, when you could be, you know, spending all that time finding a new client. Like the time, the like six hours or whatever, I ended up talking to this guy, working on his project, probably more overall, if you include the time I spent complaining to my boyfriend about it. Like I definitely could have applied to a bunch of other jobs and found a whole other client, so. There you are. That's my that's my worst client ever. That's my freelancing horror story. Uh, a guy tried to neg me into writing legal documents for him. It was a very weird experience. <laughs> and it's all for the best. Everything's a happy ending. I found much better clients and figured out I don't like press releases. But I do recommend when you are, I guess, moral of the story. When you're starting out, try everything. But remember that you are a human being and people should treat you as such. And if a client does not treat you as such, just get a GTFO, ba bail the fuck out. I put all of my kind of wisdom of starting out as a freelancer in our top nine ways for creatives to make money online guide. So if you wanna check that out um, or email me any questions, comment below on the video with any questions that you have. I'm always happy to help people who are starting their own journey as a freelancer. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, it's really helped my creativity flourish in a lot of ways. And I like not working for somebody else. I really like, I love that. Um, and I love not having to work for assholes. Cheers.